Hi, I'm Paul Howard Jones and I'm delighted to have a chance to tell you a little bit about the Masters in Education Neuroscience and Education pathway. The course itself has a very simple structure. You'll be covering 60 credits of taught units in the first term, another 60 in the second term, and then in the third term you'll be pursuing your dissertation. Let's look a little bit more at the core units, those are the mandatory units that form part of the pathway of neuroscience and education. One of the first and most important units that you'll take is Introduction to Educational Inquiry, which provides you with a broad understanding of educational research. And this is important because neuroscience and education are two very diverse subject areas. Neuroscience comes from a natural science perspective, whereas education brings together many diverse philosophies about what truth is and how we should uh, research it. So it's important to have this good grounding, understanding the core debates that surround educational research, policy and how to improve education. And this is going to introduce you to some very useful research methods and encourage you to collect your own data and analyse that as part of a group research project. You'll also be studying some statistics in education. Now, however you feel about statistics, they are absolutely key to neuroscience and they're also increasingly popular as a part of educational research. Even if you decide to focus on research, perhaps for your dissertation, that is not involving uh, measuring and not involving statistics, it's still as, as a researcher, it's going to be important for you to understand and be able to critically read the statistical analysis that you see in the papers of other researchers. In fact, when you look at brain images, every brain image is in fact a statistical map. Every one of those little squares that you see in that image is actually the result of a t-test, a statistical test that you will come to understand the meaning of through this unit. In cognition and learning, you're going to be understanding a lot more about mind. And mind is very important because, of course, we're very interested in how the brain, what we understand about the brain, provides insight into learning behaviour. But to really make those links, we need to understand about cognition, about the mind. So concepts such as working memory, attention, even thinking, these are actually cognitive mental concepts about the mind and this is the important filling in the sandwich between brain and behavior so i always say without cognitive psychology neuroscience is, is almost useless to education so it's important that on this course you'll be learning a bit about psychology and how we think about the mind in relation to learning Then there is Brain, Mind and Education, a 20 credit unit where, you, where you'll be learning much more about the relationship between the brain and how we learn. And this introduces you to begin with to a lot of um, neuroanatomy and an understanding of neural function. And this is important because as somebody who's going to become an expert in neuroscience and education, you need to be able to find your way around the brain. You need to know what different parts are called. You need to know little navigation signposts like dorsal, ventral, lateral, what these things actually mean in terms of which part of the brain that we're talking about, and also what we think that part of the brain does. But the aim of this unit is to essentially give you a very important set of tools that allows you to access specialist neuroscience literature in the area that is of interest to you and consider its critical implications for mind and behavior and be able to reflect on those. So when you have finished this unit, you should be able to look at an image such as we have on this page and be able to understand what it means. Now, actually, this uh, is a study that I carried out a few years ago. And what we're looking at is activation of the default mode network when students, actually students at the University of Bristol, are trying to revise for an examination. And this is important because the default mode network is actually the mind wandering network. And what we found was the more that this network was activated, 
uh, the less well those students did in the exam that followed. So it's actually an important marker for your, your, your learning, for, for education. And we were looking at how this default mode network activated in relation to different ways in which you were learning. If you were just reading the page, actually it was activating very strongly. But when we put the learning into a game context that made it more emotional, more exciting, then we saw deactivation of this default mode network and an increase in learning and an increase in achievement in the sub subsequent ex examination. However, it is the unit Cognitive Neuroscience and Classroom Practice where you will really begin to apply what you know about neuroscience in the classroom. This is going to provide opportunities to consider your own professional practice as an educator in relation to how the brain learns. And we talk about that in terms of processes involved, processes involved with engagement, with building of knowledge and with the consolidation of knowledge. And during this unit, you will be generating a lesson plan and being able to find yourself able to um, reflect on that lesson plan in terms of what we know about the, the brain, research that gives insight into that learning process, that learning approach that you have uh, included in your lesson plan. So actually what we're seeing here on, on the right is part of the assignment for this unit where students have generated a lesson plan in the middle of the poster and then on the outside um, there are little summaries of neuroscience uh, research which gives insight into that teaching approach that is being used in the lesson plan. Then of course also in the summer term, sorry the spring term, uh, you will have other optional units that you can take uh, we weren't able to run this one this year because of COVID, but hopefully <laughs> next year this is going to be back on the books. Um, and this is called Psychophysiological Methods. And in this unit, you learn how to make measurements, uh, simple physiological measurements such as heart rate, breathing, simple uh, EEG measurements. Um, and, and these uh, will allow you to provide to, to gain insight into some simple physiological responses associated with learning. And as part of this unit, you devise a little experiment uh, and you collect measurements from your classmates using uh, psychophysiological methods and using the equipment that we have um, and report on that in a scientific report as, as part of the assignment. And that's that's helpful because you you might, if you choose this unit, you might decide to use these methods in your dissertation uh, for the subject that you decide to make your special focus. Other optional units, uh, we have a new unit on the books now, which you might be interested in called Genetics, Society and Education. Of course, uh, when we talk about genetics, we're talking about the, the primary biological foundation of the brain. So this is perhaps a, a particularly um, interesting unit to take as part of your experience on the uh, neuroscience and education pathway. Because there are many controversial issues, of course, involved with introducing our knowledge of genetics into education genetic profiling, for example, to what extent should we be tailoring our educational programs to the, edu to the genetic profiles of our students. Or you may focus on some specialism in mental health, climate change, creativity, mathematics, and bring the neuroscience that you have learnt from the other units into uh, your lectures and your assignments for those units. Or you may decide to study psychology units further, looking more deeply into developmental psychology, psychology of individual differences, social psychology, for example. And then, of course, in the summer term, we have the dissertation. And you'll be doing a dissertation on some issue at the interface of neuroscience and education. You could be interested in teachers' ideas about the brain or children's ideas about the brain, or you might be collecting psychophysiological measures to provide insight into some learning strategy. And you will report on that in a 15,000 word research project, collecting and analysing your own data. 
And I should say that some of the dissertations that have been produced on this pathway have been publishable quality uh, and given rise to um, publications as a result. And then uh, sometimes the students have gone on to further PhD studies, which is uh, one of the, 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 um, the one of the foundations that this course can provide for you. And most of the students that we have on this pathway are educators who are wanting to apply what they learn in their practice and we also have a few students who decide that they want to go deeper into research and use this masters as a basis uh, for then applying for PhD studies. And then of course there are all those additional experiences that come about from studying at the University of Bristol. I hope that while you're here you'll be participating in exciting interesting experiments, going to fascinating seminars, perhaps also working as a student volunteer, helping us to engage the public to understand more about this fascinating area of neuroscience and education. Well it's been difficult to tell you everything about the course in such a small time but if you want to know more, please don't hesitate to contact me on my email address on this page and I'll be happy to tell you more and answer any questions or queries that you might have about the course. Thanks.